So what's one of the most important things for small business owners and entrepreneurs to really grasp and understand well? Marketing. Because marketing leads to sales leads, leads to more sales, leads to success for your business. So that's the topic for this week. We're going to be talking about paid advertising, we're going to be talking about free marketing, and we're going to be talking about uh, marketing budgets, all coming right up. So welcome back to the channel. The topic this week is marketing, really vital topic if you're a business owner. If you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing. Uh, down here generally is the red subscribe button. And if you hit the bell next to it, you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out and they come out on a Tuesday evening, Sydney time. But let's get back to the topic, marketing. A lot of people will get into business and they'll be very good at the technical aspects of the business, but not so good at the sales and marketing. So this week we're going to be talking about marketing and three aspects of marketing. Uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about the marketing budget, but that goes hand in hand with what sort of things should you be doing for paid marketing and what sort of things can you be doing for free marketing. So let's run through. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, marketing is a little bit of a hobby of mine, a bit of a passion of mine, so I've been doing it for over 20 years uh, in my own business, and it seems to work. So I'll share with you uh, what's been working for us. And actually, just an insight into how well the marketing works. A lot of people say to me, uh, how many salespeople do you have in your businesses? So we don't have any, uh, because our marketing is good. We get lots of sales leads, we get enough sales just from that. So in terms of marketing options, and forgive me, I'm just going to read off a bit of paper here, and maybe we can uh, put these options up on the screen. Let's talk about paid marketing first. What comes to mind when you think of paid marketing? Print ads. So, you know, ad adverts in trade magazines and newspapers. Look, to be honest, I've tried that over the last 25 years or so. I've never got it to work for me. You know, it's not like I'm running promotions on window cleaning or something like that. Uh, you know, professional services, generally I don't find paid ads work very well at all. Um, we'll do them now and again, but I can get a much better ROI, return on investment doing other things. What about events? That's a, a fairly costly form of marketing. Um, yup, for the last 23 years or so, we've been doing lots and lots of events. I think our record is we did 15 events in one year. Uh, that was for, for my uh, management consulting business. Um, I love events. I love sharing knowledge, love hosting people, networking with people, but they're expensive. Um, to give you an insight, so events that we put on in Sydney, Australia and Melbourne and other cities here, generally we'll get about 200 people to a full day event, fully catered. That's going to cost me about $25,000. Now, depending on the sort of business that you are and, and who your market is, you know, we're, we're predominantly a B2B consulting business. Um, so you've got to put on a good show, you know, it's got to be in a nice place with nice catering and so on, but that's a big expense. And those are free events. Um, we, a little while ago, decided not to do free anymore because people don't value free and you get a, a bigger dropout rate at free events. So we put a notional price on, I think we've tried $25, $47, uh, and all of that goes to charity on the day of the event. So it's more just to make sure people are committed and turn up. Um, but yeah, events can be fairly expensive. Are we going to continue doing them post-COVID? I'm not sure. We've been having a lot of fun with online events over the last nine months, but I think we'll probably edge back into live events in a smaller way. Uh, they take a lot of organizing, a lot of expense. I mean, that $25,000 is just for the sort of hotel and catering. You know, very often then I'm flying six staff um, and a truckload of equipment, you know, interstate. So it really does get expensive. You've got to look at the ROI. That's what it's all about with marketing. Uh, what other paid marketing do we do? Google adverts? Yep. Uh, I, look, I've been doing those for 20 odd years. I think they're important. Um, some people say, well, look, you know, when I Google the stuff that you do, you, you're kind of at the top of the first page anyway. Why would you have Google adverts? Well, I think it's important to kind of reinforce um, you know, your credibility online. So if, if, you know, people are searching for what you do and they see your website and they see one of your adverts as well, it's kind of a subconscious reinforcement. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and obviously, if you're not ranking organically, then Google ads are going to help or other social media ads. So yeah, we spend quite a lot <laughs> on Google adverts. 
what other form of adverts? Um, most of our marketing spend is online, I have to say. Uh, social media ads, we have tried Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, uh, what else, Twitter ads. Uh, I mean, depending on where your market hangs out, they can all be very worthwhile. Um, some of them I find very expensive. Uh, we use a lot of online advertising. We've even used things like Meetup. Um, it can get very expensive, you know, for, for an event, if you're trying to promote an event per registration. So again, you have to look at ROI. Um, what is it that you're promoting? What's the value of, of what you're promoting? What's the profit margin on that? And how much can you afford out of that profit margin to spend basically on advertising? You should always have paid advertising being recouped through your sales. Um, so that's probably on the paid side. Um, what other paid marketing do you do? Uh, maybe you'd like to comment down below. I'd love to hear and what works for you. Maybe we can share some tips. Okay, so that's the paid side. Now let's have a look at the free side. Um, and I'll put a caveat on this because I don't believe even the free marketing is free. <laughs> um, to put that into context, I have a very big marketing team. So we spend a lot um, on our in-house team. So even if we're you know, creating stuff in-house and just doing social media posting and stuff, it all comes with a cost. Okay, so what works on the free side? So you can start getting your marketing plan ready for, for next year. Content marketing, without a doubt. It's a long-term game, but it works really well. So think of you know, social media posting, videos, blogs. Blogs still work really well. Um, we run, I think, about 14 websites across our businesses. And I think 12 of those have blogs on them. So, so you know, that's kind of a bit extreme, but that's a big beast to feed, you know, with articles and videos and those sort of things. Um, if you've got a, a smaller focus, you know, just one business, a smaller business, you're going to have a website with a blog, you know, get a blog going, commit to at least writing something once a week on your blog. Uh, and that will start to build a following. Uh, the plus with that, it also helps with your Google ranking because you're getting new content on your site all the time. So content marketing, definitely on your website, on your blog, on social media, uh, whatever platforms you're on. What platforms should you be on? You should be on the platforms that your potential clients use. Simple as that. So um, like I say, my main business is management consulting. Oh, excuse me, got itchy nose. Um, all of our all of our potential clients hang out on LinkedIn. So that's you know kind of where we post a lot of stuff. I haven't had a lot of luck with Facebook and some of those uh, other platforms. Next one, email marketing. Uh, so email marketing, I think it's declined over the years in effectiveness. We've been doing it for, I don't know, 15 years probably. Um, and I've seen the open rates and the click-through rates decline a bit over the years. I think people are getting a little bit tired of it, but hey, it still works. The key is to provide valuable content. And if you haven't read uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's book, uh, what is it, Jab, 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 Right Hook, I suggest you read that. It's a very simple message, Jab, 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 Right Hook. I should be with the left hand probably. Um, and that is don't be promoting stuff all the time on your marketing and particularly your email marketing. So you might send out you know, valuable content, instructional stuff, helpful stuff. And then every fourth or fifth time you might say, oh, we've got a webinar going or we've got this special offer. So don't be overly promotional. So email marketing definitely works and webinars definitely work. Uh, they're a great way to reach people. We've always done webinars. Um, but during COVID, uh, I had this kind of rush of blood to the head uh, and decided we would do a series of webinars weekly. And we kept coming up with topics and new topics and more topics. And we ended up with a 16 week series. Um, and then we decided, oh, so that we can reach more people around the world, let's repeat each one. And so we were doing uh, midday on a Wednesday, I think it was, or Tuesday, midday, Wednesday, uh, Australia time, Sydney. And then we would do uh, midday Wednesday LA time, which was really interesting. So because it meant that we, we were doing midday our time and then 6 a.m. the next morning uh, for LA. But it was a lot of fun. And we, we reached thousands of people. We had 92 countries, I think, represented on our webinars. So webinars are a great way uh, to reach new audiences, to share information um, and subtly promote what you do. Don't be over the top with it. 
Um, now I mentioned none of that stuff is really free. I mean, there's a little bit of a cost involved with all of these things. Uh, maybe you're a small business owner and you're having to do this all yourself. So, you know, you're preparing the webinar content, you're setting up the webinar software, you know, where you've got Webinar Jam or GoToWebinar or whatever else, you've got to pay the licenses for that. So that there is a small cost involved, but probably the biggest cost is your time. So be very careful how much of your time you put into these things, particularly with, you know, content creation and content marketing. I mean, that's, that's a fantastic opportunity uh, to build a good support team around you. Uh, and if you're if you're a little bit worried about the expense of that, we'll do like most small business owners and entrepreneurs do and get virtual assistants overseas. Um, so I don't make a secret of it. I have a very big back office overseas in the Philippines. Uh, my marketing team is seven people. Um, and we just, you know, we have, it's like a production house. <laughs> so, for, so for us doing videos and webinars and things like that is no problem at all. But you'd be amazed with just one virtual assistant how much that help is to you in actually preparing this stuff and particularly you know, social media, email marketing. So uh, don't think you have to do this all on your own. Okay, so we talked about the paid stuff, the free stuff. Let's talk about budgets. How much should you budget for marketing? Now, new businesses and startups generally don't spend much at all because the business owner is doing it all themselves and you know, it's a couple of software licenses here and there, and that's about it. Um, <clears throat> I actually, we, we spend a lot on, on marketing, and I'll kind of tell you the figure in a moment. Uh, but I was wondering what the benchmark was, uh, and I actually looked up online, and, and there was a, some government department, you know, helping small business, and they were saying, I think it was uh, between 5 and 7% of income is generally what you should be spending on marketing. So what does that mean? If you're a million dollar business, that's between 50 and 70,000 a year. Uh, if you're a half million dollars business, 25 to 35. Uh, if you're a five million dollar business, you know, that's a quarter of a million up to 350,000. When I started looking at these numbers, and I, I know how much we spend on marketing, uh, we'd be up around 12%, I would think. Um, but we do a lot of marketing. And, I, and, I, and, and that is for three or four businesses. Uh, 14 websites, you know, all those blogs, all that kind of stuff. So that's at one extreme. Um, you really ought to be spending probably 5 to 7%. I think that's reasonable if I look back to when we started. Um, yeah, we were probably spending 6 or 7% of our income on marketing. Don't let marketing lapse. It is so important for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, and I, I think I've mentioned this before on the channel. Uh, in back in March 2020, when COVID hit, uh, we we were very worried, like all businesses. Um, thankfully, we sailed through it and have been very, very busy all the way through. But back in March, you know, we were doing our contingency planning and looking at our budgets and if we have to cut, where do we cut? Where do we cut? Uh, and we looked at the marketing spend, which was quite big. And I said, there's no way we're going to cut the marketing spend. You know what we did? We actually increased it, uh, I think, by at least 50%. Uh, because that's what everybody does. When times are hard, they cut the marketing and then you get less sales leads. And it's a great opportunity because everybody's cutting their marketing, they're not as visible, boost yours uh, and, and you'll be much more visible. So there we go, just some thoughts on marketing, which is such an important topic. Um, have a think you know, about the sort of marketing that you're doing. Are you getting the return in, on investment from it? Uh, are there some other things that you could be doing? Maybe you've got your paid marketing. How much should, should you be spending on that? You've got your technically free marketing. Um, get your marketing calendar out, your marketing plan, get working on that. And have a, have a think about how much you can afford to spend on marketing. And typically 5 to 7% of income is, is not a bad figure. But I would love to hear what works for you. Uh, do comment down below. Uh, what kind of marketing do you find really works for you? Or maybe there's some marketing that I haven't mentioned that you'd like to know more about. So by all means, ask about that because we've kind of tried most things, I think, over the years. So thanks for watching. Uh, pleasure to be with you again. Um, do keep those comments coming. Uh, do share, do like. Uh, that way that we know which videos are more popular. Do you know how I pick this topic? I go back over the channel and I look at which topics were people most interested in. And this was one of them. So I thought, let's do another marketing related video because that's obviously what people enjoy. And if you're new to the channel, uh, think about subscribing. Hit that subscribe button down there, hit the bell, 
and then you'll know when the next videos are coming out. See you next week.